Okay, so now uh, let's have a look into this. So I'm going to create the uh, this is the diagram. Just we are going to explain. Uh, this is a pulley, and you can see here uh, this is the cart, and I just hand a mass. Let's say the mass is M1. Or this is a mass, we call it M2, right? So the cart mass is M2, and there is a mass. Now, I mean, uh, we're going to understand the force acting on this each object. That's what I'm going to do here. Look here, we know that the mass M1, of course, there's a force acting down, we call it M1g. And of course, if you know that if this is an object which is hand. So that if the object is hanging this way, that means we know that the force is acting downward, we call mg, and there is another force which is making them to, we call the tension in the string. So here in this case, the net force is zero, that's why there is no acceleration. So the force mg is equal to tension, so that means sigma mg minus t is equal to zero. So the net force is zero, there is no acceleration, right? So that means in this case, there is a force acting in this direction, we call that the tension in the string. And that tension is acting on this mass. So that's the reason the, the object is moving in this direction. So the only force acting on M2 is tension. We consider this force, the force of friction. Here we consider it is zero, the force of friction in this direction is zero because the friction in the surface, I mean, we consider that it's a friction of surface. Now, uh, we have this information, so we, if we use this information, we can easily figure out the acceleration of the system. So that means the moment, in, the moment I leave my hand, what will happen? The cart is going to accelerate. That means this cart is going to move in this direction at the same time because we connect them through an inextensible string so that the moment it moves, this also moves. That means both the objects will be moved at the same rate so the acceleration of both the object is, let's, we call it A. So if we know the acceleration of this, it will be the same of this. So we're going to try to make a relation for the acceleration here. We're going to apply Newton's second law here. What Newton's second law says, the net force on an object is equal to its mass times acceleration. So what is the net force acting in this direction, in this object M1? Let me write a relation here. The net force acting on this object there is one force acting downward and this is the force acting upward. If I consider the direction of motion is positive, that means this direction is the direction of motion. So if I consider this is positive, this will be a negative one. And direction of motion, okay, this will be a positive one. So let me make the relation here once again. What is the net force acting on an object? Net force is equal to MA, we know that Newton's second law. I'm going to use the Newton's second law here. What is the net force? There are two forces. One is mg, that is m1g, because it's a mass, m1g. And the another force is, yes, minus tension. So the total force is equal to that object's mass, m1, into its acceleration. So I have a relation, right? Now, I'm going to call this equation number one. I'm going to write another relation from here. What is the net force acting here? Here, there is only one force. So the net force is tension is equal to ma what is the mass m2 i have an equation number two and i have two equations there is the one that we are looking for how can i get it simple if you add these two equations what will happen if i add these two equations the left hand side becomes m1g minus t plus t so minus t and plus t cancel so that i will get the left hand side m1g and the right hand side if i add M1A plus M2A, so A is common, so M1 plus M2, right? From this, what is acceleration? Yes, the acceleration is, from this relation, acceleration is M1G divided by M1 plus M2. Yes, M1G, that means the weight that we had, the W, or the weight divided by M1 plus M2, M1 plus M2, the total mass, right? So we can call it force. 
right? So actually, we have this relation, and from this relation, I, I can easily calculate the acceleration theoretically because in my setup, I know already what is m1 is. If I if I keep m1 in my previous explanation, I kept a mass of how much? 25 gram. Because of 20 gram, another 5 gram. And here I have a cart, and the mass of the cart is known. It is 500 gram. So if I have this information, I can easily calculate the theoretical value of acceleration, right? How acceleration is m1. M1 is 0 0.025 because I converted into kilogram times 9.8 divided by m1 plus m2, 500 plus 25, 525 in kilogram. So I easily calculated the theoretical value of acceleration and of course the experimental value will be very close to that. And we'll do that. Ah, no? We'll... Yeah, today we are going to do Newton's second law. What we are going to do? We are going to verify Newton's second law. And everybody know what is Newton's second law, right? Yeah, in mathematical form, we say net force, F is equal to M times A, right? Anyway, how we are going to do it? So have a, uh, have a look into this setup. Today, I have a cart, and the cart is in a horizontal plane, and you know that this is a track. The track has zero friction. In fact, uh, theoretically, I mean, uh, there is some friction, but we consider it as a frictionless surface. That means we will exclude the friction in the surface. But... Now, is the object is moving? No. Why the object is not moving? Because the net force is zero. The acceleration is zero. But the moment I, what happens? It is, it moves with a certain velocity. But look at this case. If I wanted to move this object, I can, I can pull this, right? If I pull this, it will move in this direction. That means I apply force in this direction and it is moved in the direction of force. If I have a hanger, and I have a hanger and a pulley here, so I'm going to add some mass here. Let's say I'm going to add 20 gram and there is another 5 gram here, so this is a 25 gram mass. So imagine, if I do this way, what will happen? Yes, you know that there is a force acting on this object, and this card, there is a force, and that force is, this is the force mg is acting downwards. This force mg, actually what we do use here, we use a pulley, what is the purpose of pulley? In most of our experiment, we'll use the pulley. The purpose of pulley is to change the direction of force. In fact, I'm applying a force this direction, but in this cart, the force is acting in this direction. Actually, who help us to change the direction of force? The pulley. So we call this is one of the very important mechanical tool and we will use in most of the experiments and most of the uh, workplace. You know that pulleys are used in everywhere, right? Anyway, so the purpose of pulley is to change the direction of force. Now, because of this force, what happens? The object is accelerated. How much is the acceleration? If we know these mass, if we know this mass and this mass, is it, us, is it help us to solve it mathematically? Yes, it, it is possible to us to solve mathematically if we know Newton's second law. So our today's experimental objective to provide a Newton's circle law here and calculate the acceleration experimentally. At the same time, we have this setup. While this moves, we can get the acceleration of this object from the experimental setup. So we have two acceleration. One is the theoretical calculated and the one from the experimental. And below, besides that, we will do certain analysis of Newton's second law. That's what we are going to do. Have a look. Okay. So, uh, so we have the equation for the acceleration equal to m1g divided by m1 plus m2. Okay, let's go further with this equation. Can I write once again here? Yeah, the equation acceleration of the object which is equal to m1g that is the force divided by the total mass. Actually, uh, here if I am going to repeat this experiment by increasing the hanging mass, that means if I increase the force. That means if I increase this mass, what will happen? If I increase this mass, what will happen? Of course, I'm increasing the force. If I increase the force, what will happen? If I increase the force, definitely this acceleration will increase. But I have a plan 
to keep this as a constant. That means I'm not going to change this m1 plus m2. This is we call the total mass. I'm going to kept constant. If I keep this constant, what will happen? So if this is a constant, I can say acceleration is proportional to m1g. That means acceleration is proportional to force. Yes, this is our plan. But you may have a doubt. How could I keep this constant and increase the energy. That is a very interesting technique of this experiment. What we are going to do, we are going to just simply transferring one mass from this to this. What will happen? I increase M1G. Now the M1G is increased. At the same time, the total mass M1 plus M2 is a constant. And that's the technique we use in this experiment. Now, what is my plan? I'm going to increase the force. That means I'm going to increase M1G as steps of 20 grams. So imagine the first trial I'm going to do a 25 gram. Next, I'm going to move another 10 gram, another 20 gram, sorry, another 20 gram from here to this. So it becomes 45 gram. Then of course, what I did, I increased the force. So the acceleration will increase. Now I can have few values or few set of accelerations for different force different force and that means i'm going to find the first corresponding force of 25 gram then i will get an acceleration then 45 gram i will get another set then 65 gram then uh, i will put 85 gram there then i will get that means what will happen when i increase the force the acceleration is increased now if you look into this equation I'm going to have a set of force and acceleration. Is this equation will provide you something? Of course, we already learned once we have this kind of set of readings. That means today I have a set of A and set of M1G. And from this relation, we understand that A is proportional to M1G at the constant M1 plus M2. That means I kept M1 plus M2 constant during this experiment. That means if I have a set of values, if I plot acceleration here and M1G here, what kind of a graph I can get? I can get a straight line, right? And what will be the slope represents? Because I kept Y axis, I kept acceleration on the Y axis and I kept M1G along the X axis. So it will be a straight line and what is the slope M? Of course, here from this relation that is 1 by m1 plus m2 times m1g right so the slope is what from this the slope will be equal to 1 divided by m1 plus m2 and during our experiment we keep we kept m1 plus m2 constant so i can find this the mass that i kept constant from the slope what is the mass we kept constant? The m total, we will get it from the slope that is 1 by slope. And in our experiment, our plan to keep masses of 500 gram mass here, and I have a 20 grams of 3 here in the beginning, and a 20 gram hanging here. So it is basically with the hand, it is 25 gram, and here 60 gram, and here 50 gram. So the total. 585 gram is the mass, 585 gram is the mass I kept constant and of course experimentally if I can kept, if I, if I find the slope and from that if I calculate the experimental m total it will be very close to or approximately equal to 585 we will get. If we are going to see this is true, if I, if I can provide, if I, if I do the experiment, if I can get the same value, what does it mean? It means whatever we did during the experimental part is true. Actually, we derived the relation based on the Newton's second law. That means from this, we can say that we verify Newton's second law. That is our experimental objective. Now, I'm going to show you how to do the experimental part. Yeah, this is the experimental setup and my plan to add uh, 25 grams. This is 25 gram because 20 and another 5. I'm first trial. I'm going to take a 25 gram here, but uh, the 500, 25, 500, 525, another 20, 45, 65, 85. The total mass is 585. So this is M1 is 25, 
m2 is now 560 so the total mass is 565 what's my plan i'm going to leave it like this so what will happen it will be accelerated and of course by knowing uh, now we are we already know the theoretical value of acceleration because we know m1 we know m1 plus m2 that's enough for us to calculate now we, we you are going to calculate the theoretically all these values then we will compare with the experimental value now what i'm going to do my plan to i mean start recording so what i'm going to do i'm going to collect the record data so i'm going to go and click the collect button and the moment i click the collect button i'm going to leave it now it is accelerated and the moment it hits uh, it stops automatically now see i have a graph like this i'm going to auto scale it you can see that during this time what happens the card was not moving because i kept it there then immediately when i leave the card is accelerated then it hit and bounce back if i don't want this reading what i can do i can just to stop uh, after it hit the moment it hit i can stop i will show you once again see i'm going to start so i'm going to leave it and the moment it hit i stop so i'm getting a very good curve a very good graph and from this graph you see as we expected the velocity time graph is a straight line and you can see that this is a straight line and from this straight line we know that vt graph the slope represents the acceleration so i'm going to select the area of that motion so the motion start from here it is the motion it is a accelerated motion so the point it hit here so i just select the area then i'm going to fit this into a linear fit so this is the one linear fit the moment i fit i can get the slope what is the slope here the slope is 0 0.0438 Actually, we know that the, for the velocity time graph, the slope represents acceleration. So the acceleration is 0 0.438 meter per second square. And this is the experimental acceleration. Now you already calculated theoretically, and these two will be very close. And what's our next plan? We are going to repeat this experiment by changing the mass. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to transfer one mass from here to here. So what happens now, the mass is 45 gram. So what will happen, I increase the force so that the acceleration will be more. So I will repeat this with the 45 gram. Then I will add another 20, 65 gram. Then another 20, 85 gram. So I will have a set of uh, uh, acceleration for different forces. We will provide you the data and from this we will do the rest of the experiment. Now that's all about this.